Well, let's talk to one of those who is on strike. That's Dr. Tom Dolphin. He's a consultant. He's also a spokesman for the British Medical Association. Good morning to you, Tom. Good morning, Julie. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, the uh, health secretary uh, has said that this is, you know, a, a damaging strike. He said he's worried about the increasing militancy of NHS strikes as consultants walk out. And he says these are politically motivated strikes. Are they? They're not. They're not. Sorry, it's too much support from the street. I can only just hear you. Um, they're not politically motivated. They're motivated by the fact that our members have seen their uh, salaries fall in value by 35% since 2008. And what we're seeing that reflected in is the recruitment and retention in the NHS. We've got doctors leaving in their thousands to go and work in other countries where they can earn almost twice as much. And that's leading to a difficulty in the NHS in providing the services people need. You were talking about the, uh, the waiting lists and people. There was a huge backlog already of 7 million people waiting uh, at the start in January, before the strikes even, strikes even started. So, the, yes, there will be more operations cancelled today. We're sorry about that. I'd much rather be, you know, at work seeing patients. But we're looking to the longer term. We're looking to the recruitment and retention of staff in the NHS, which we can't do if we're not valuing our staff in the way that other countries are. No, I think there are a lot of people who will understand both sides on this. They don't want a single person to miss out on an operation. They may have had it cancelled many times before, uh, may have been long delayed by the NHS shutting down to non-COVID patients. And, uh, let's face it, the vast majority of the, that big waiting list was built up in the years uh, before we had COVID and lockdowns. But they'll also say, say they, they, they understand that doctors, like many people in the public sector and private sector, have seen their wages eroded. But when you're talking about consultants, now look, I'm very happy for doctors to be paid a good wage. Highly skilled, you work very hard, difficult work, it should be valued. We want to encourage people to go into that job and you're competing with lots of other careers. But this is, where, this is a read the room moment for an awful lot of people who are struggling paying their gas bills. A lot of people who are struggling to put food on the table. You've been offered 6%, junior doctors 8.8%. Um, an awful lot of people say, you know, look, you're on six-figure salaries. Yes, you've worked very hard for it, but your, 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 your case, your cause isn't very strong compared with most people who are struggling by on 30,000 a year. What do you say to that? To some extent, it doesn't really matter what you or I think about the amount that we're paid. The point is that people are leaving the NHS in large numbers. People that used to come to the UK to work in the NHS as consultants are not coming here anymore. They're also going to those other countries. We value their doctors better. It's an international market for, for medical professionals, and we've got to compete in that market if we want people to come to the UK, particularly when the cost of living is so high. And uh, we've got to make sure that we've got a viable workforce. We've got 8,000 consultant posts across the NHS that are empty at the moment. And we know that, you know, the public in general do support us on this because there's a survey that we've done that shows that six, more than so almost two-thirds of the public think that the money that's been spent on the dispute so far in providing strike cover and all that kind of thing should have just been spent on resolving the dispute because that's the same amount of money. It, uh, it, except it, it wouldn't resolve the dispute because you're asking for 35 percent Paris. Just finally brief if you would. It's been more than a hundred days just since back, the... Just to be clear, yep. Julia, Julia, sorry, I need to just be clear. We're not asking for 35 percent up front. We're saying our pay has dropped by 35 percent and we're asking for it to be restored. It doesn't have to all be in one go. Okay, fair, no, fair years, point, fair point. We've just got to have a convincing mechanism for it. Okay, fair point. Just finally, though, it's been 100 days or longer since the Health Secretary, Steve Barclay, sat down with the British Medical Association representatives to discuss this while patients are suffering. Whose fault is that? Well, it's, I think it's closer to 176 days now. Um, but the, the problem we've got here is that the, the government doesn't want to meet with us. We've always got an open door. We've said if you come to us with a decent, credible offer okay. that people can trust. And the problem is we've got a very low-trust environment now. They've got to come to us with an offer we can trust is actually going to lead to pay restoration. We'll put it to our members. OK, Dr Tom Dolphin, appreciate you joining us from a very uh, noisy uh, picket line there outside the University College at London Hospital.